Hello everyone and sorry about no videos for the past few days, I was uh, very busy with uh, real world stuff. Uh, but we are returning to the Capablanca saga, you know, the good stuff, and we are uh, continuing our match against Emmanuel Lasker, the 1921 match. Uh, if you haven't uh, been with us from the beginning, uh, the first thing you will see in the description below is game one from this match. So, you know, when you uh, talk about it with your friends and family, you don't miss out on anything. But also there is a link to the entire Capablanca saga from the beginning from his match uh, against Juan Corzo, the Cuban national champion, uh, up until this point, if you want to, you know, uh, just give it a go from the beginning. Now, returning to the match, uh, game one was a draw, now uh, Lasker has the white pieces, let's see how he deals uh, uh, against uh, the, the Cuban. Uh, with d4 by Lasker, d5 by Capablanca, c4, e6, sorry about that, uh, and we all know, of course, where this is going. We have knight to c3 and now knight to f6, the queen's gambit declined is on the board, uh, knight to f3 and now knight b to d7. And here Lasker plays e3, which is very interesting, Capablanca says that, you know, the, the most basic of chess principles uh, say that you have to develop your uh, bishop first before closing it with your pawn. Uh, but uh, Lasker uh, has a different idea. He plays e3, uh, but it's interesting that bishop to g5 is the mainline move today. But, uh, you know, it's uh, also uh, interesting to point out that you don't need an, uh, like a super engine to tell you uh, these things uh, if you just follow the chess principles. And it's also something I wanted to mention. I don't know. Uh, whenever I meet a, a beginner, like someone who knows the rules and he played some some games, but uh, then uh, when uh, I ask him, "Do you want to play?" he says, "No, I'm I'm really not good at chess. I don't know any openings." So then you 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 have to explain it uh, to these people that it's okay if you don't know openings. Openings are for grandmasters. Well international masters and grandmasters but what you really want to learn uh, are chess principles and those are very easy you don't even have to learn uh, chess principles because they are so uh, so simple i mean just you know control the center with your pawns uh, knights go into the game before bishops uh, rooks uh, are you know rooks have to control open lines uh, and files so rooks be go behind past pawns don't bring your queen out too early and so on and so on and when you follow this basic set of chess principles you will play a certain opening you know even if you, even even if you don't know any openings uh just wanted to mention that uh, but okay lasker goes for e3 uh, with bishop to b bishop to e7 by capablanca bishop to d3 both players castle and now we have d captures on c4 uh, which is something that it's uh, you know played very often even today uh, with bishop captures on c4 and now c5 uh, attacking the center you want to play a6 b5 next and uh, well now just uh, uh, see what white will do uh, with queen to e2 by lasker and now a6 capablanca prepares b5 and now rook to d1 uh, with b5 by Capablanca grabbing more space on the queen side, bishop to d3, and now bishop to b7. Uh, this light square bishop assumes the most important diagonal in the game. And it's often when you play the queen's gambit declined uh, with the black pieces, your biggest problem would be how to get the light square bishop, you know, uh, fully operational. And here Capablanca already did that on move 11, which is something that might have something to do with Lasker not playing, you know, according to the principles. He left his bishop uh, undeveloped on c1, which is something he will have to rectify and Capablanca mentions that the only reason in his opinion to play pawn to e3 before actually developing the bishop to g5 is if you want to maybe play something like b3 and develop the bishop to fianchetto it on the queen side but doing something like that now wouldn't really go your way for example if b3 you you can just play c captures on d4 e captures and rook c8 and now okay bishop to b2 you've developed your dark square bishop but now queen to a5 already uh, there's there are a lot of problems here for white uh well, for one, there's the threat of rook captures on c3. So after you defend it, now you've left your a2 pawn unguarded. You're going to bring another attacker to the c3 knight. And, uh, well, uh, obviously white already made uh, some sort of a mistake because it's black who's attacking, it's black who's pushing, and you don't uh, really have to show for anything with the white pieces. Now you have to move the knight, and black can just win material. Captures here, captures, captures, captures. You can snatch the pawn on a2. You're already attacking the b3 pawn and white, uh, well, will probably lose this game. So here after bishop to b7 by Capablanca, Lasker pushes e4. He's now ready to develop the <laughs> dark square bishop, uh, um, you know, much later than, than he probably should have. We have c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and now knight to e5. A great move by Capablanca, uh, threatening to, to take away Lasker's bishop pair, and he's not worried about the queen being uh, on the same 
file as the rook here because even if Lasker plays bishop captures on b5, captures on knight, captures on e6, seems very dangerous, yes the queen is under attack, but once you move the queen, let's say queen b8, uh, you can capture the rook, there's really no better move, captures, captures, and you don't have a, a good compensation for uh, for the sacrifice material. Okay, bishop f4, you can go b4, attack the knight, knight d5, you can trade here, captures, captures, and yes, white does have a pass pawn here, but you'll, you're just gonna, gonna block it, and with, the, with Capablanca's superior bishop pair, uh, and the position being in black's favor should have the upper hand here. So Capablanca not worried about any tactics of, of this kind. Uh, we have knight to b3 by Lasker and now Capablanca just trades. Uh, we have knight captures, rook captures and queen to c7 getting the queen out of the way. And uh, well, the, the, this bishop is already uh, nicely eyeing the king. Now the queen does the same. So Capablanca is ready to play uh, in the center on the king side, on the queen side. Everything is good for, for black here. And here, still, Lasker really can't develop with bishop to g5. This dark square bishop really is giving him a lot of problems because after h6, now you can, okay, you can trade for the knight, which isn't something you want to do. But if you move it, then knight captures on e4 just wins a pawn. If bishop captures, you're just going to capture on c3, attack the queen, and after you capture here, a queen captures on e7, and if you count the pawns, Capablanca is now up a pawn. So uh, still not able to develop well. Uh, the way you would want to develop. So we have e5 by Lasker. Uh, now, okay, you do disrupt white's, uh, black's pieces coordination, but on the other hand, it will be uh, somewhat difficult to, de to defend this uh, pawn that is now already on e5. Uh, we have knight to d5 uh, and now rook to g3. Lasker says, okay, this is a very nice attacking piece. It's also a very nice defending piece since it guards g2. I really want to play bishop to h6 uh, and uh, well, start, start an attack against the black king. First, Capablanca captures on c3, attacks the queen, so you have to react to this. And you also don't want to allow some, some battery creation with queen to c6, then white would be... Uh, forced uh, to defend. So first, rook captures on c3, kicks away the queen. We have queen to d7. Capablanca said in his book that, uh, well, he felt very confident after playing queen to d7 and that he feels that black should now have a superior game. Uh, something I always enjoy uh, when Capablanca, uh, you know, annotates his, his own games. Uh, he will say uh, black will have a superior game here. Sounds very, very professional and very gentleman, gentlemanly, if uh, that, that's a word. Uh, but okay, uh, rook back to g3, Lasker now ready to play bishop to h6, and now Capablanca in the, uh, you know, uh, expect expecting of bishop to h6, he moves the rook, rook f to d8, now gets full control of the d file, and he's not really worried, because now you can push g6 without losing material. With bishop to h6 by Lasker, g6 now, of course defending, and now Lasker retreats, bishop to e3, and here Lasker wants Capablanca to play rook a c8. This is the last uh, piece that's really not doing anything, so you kind of do want to play it a rook a c8 but then Lasker will play bishop to b6 and then Capablanca will have to move this rook uh, from the uh, great d8 square so Capablanca doesn't want to do it he plays queen d5 here he's not all too satisfied with queen d5 because he says it's a move but uh, you know I, I couldn't find any better moves and if you want to for example uh, compare Capablanca's move to the top engine recommendation which is bishop to d5 bishop to d5 uh, seems like it improves the position or the well uh, the activity of the light square bishop it's not all that easy to attack this bishop you don't have uh, a light square bishop yourself this knight will have to waste a lot of moves to attack the light square bishop and it's just an excellent piece there so uh, uh, perhaps another slow move would have uh, gone a long way for black but okay queen d5 Capablanca says now uh, uh, he does have to give up the bishop pair which Lasker of course goes for we have knight to a5 Rook a to c8, now it's okay to develop the rook on c8. Knight captures on b7, queen captures, still guarding the b6 square. And now uh, bishop back to h6 by Lasker, which is a very nice attacking idea. Uh, if you go with rook to d1, seems normally Lasker also would like to defend, the, develop the, light, the, <laughs> the rook. Uh, it just loses the game because rook captures, queen captures, and rook to d8. Uh, now you have to move the queen, for example, queen e1, and now you play queen to c7, and you cannot defend the e5 pawn, uh, and also defend against the threat of queen to c2 followed by rook to d1. So uh, you would uh, lose a lot of material here, uh, and uh, in the end probably the game. 
Uh, for example, if you try and defend it with f4, just queen c2, and there's no defense against rook d1, there are too many back, back rank weaknesses. So after queen captures on b7, we have bishop to h6 by Lasker, and now queen back to d5. Uh, we have b3 by Lasker, now he can get the rook into the game without the a2 pawn being a target, and here, uh, queen to d4 by Capablanca. He wants to start attacking this pawn here, and he decided to go for queen to d4, followed by rook to d5, the queen makes room for the rook, then the other rook can also come to c5, attack the rook, and perhaps later the bishop will also join the attack against the pawn that is now on a dark square. He says bishop to b4 would probably have been better, uh, because if you play bishop to b4, you can always go rook c5, play bishop to c3, which also attacks the pawn, but more importantly, the bishop on this diagonal prevents uh, the rook from coming to e1 to help out with the defense of the e5 pawn. Uh, so, uh, probably uh, a better idea for Capablanca, and the engine agrees with Capablanca. We have queen to d4 now. Uh, rook to f1 by Lasker. Now preparing to move this rook. Uh, play g3 and f4 to really solidify in the center. Uh, we have rook to d5 by Capablanca. Going after the pawn here. And now rook to e3. Uh, and here bishop to a3. Now with ideas of, uh, well, maybe playing bishop to b2 to, to get another attacker to the, pawn, to the e5 pawn here. But g3, and now Capablanca, uh, after thinking about the position, uh, he plays queen to b2. And we already mentioned that the, the time control is 15 moves per hour, and this is already move 28, so both players are uh, forced to make two more moves uh, before the, you know, the, the <laughs> hour expires. So uh, here, bring another attacker to the e5 pawn wouldn't really work because Lasker had queen to f3 in mind. And now if rook captures an e5, you go queen to, d, uh, sorry, rook to d3. And now after the queen moves, and now you get the other rook to d1. And with the bishop slicing over here, you have, uh, well, for the moment, the queen does guard the d8 square. But white would have uh, a lot of uh, attacking opportunities here. Queen to f6 with the threat of just checkmating black. Uh, okay, the bishop for the moment uh, controls this diagonal. But there are a lot of, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, attacking potential for white here. So Capablanca doesn't like it. He decides to play queen to b2 here uh, and offers a queen trade. He says, okay, it's a weak pawn. If you want to defend it, you're just going to have to, uh, you know, play f4 at some point, And then maybe I will be able uh, to, to use this against you. Because then basically Lasker's bishop would become a bad bishop. All of the pawns on dark squares and a dark square bishop, not something you want to have. Whereas Capablanca has a dark square bishop and all of his pawns are nicely on light squares, which means he has a good bishop and he will be, he will have a much superior game. Uh, or, or just a superior game, you know. Uh, so, okay, rook to e1 now, preparing uh, for a queen trade, and probably Capablanca says that capturing the queen, for example, followed by bishop to b4 would have been the, the, the best way to go to, but this is move 29, and he really has to uh, increase uh, the tension, so rook to c2, just uh, forcing Lasker to make uh, his last move before time control, and we have queen to f3, Lasker uh, pretty much the best move, there's uh, nothing to do here. And now Capablanca says he thought about bishop to f8, which he couldn't decide for himself if it if it was a winning move or a losing move. And he gives uh, the exact same line uh, your engine will give you, just bishop captures, king captures, queen to f6, uh, getting the queen into the attack, king to g8, not allowing queen to h6, and now just h4. And he says that uh, black is better here, and of course the engine agrees with Capablanca, but uh, that uh, it will be very hard to defend this position against Lasker, as uh, white also has <laughs> a lot of attacking potential here. So he decides against it. He plays bishop to e7, uh, and now rook 3 to e2. Lasker now offers uh, some trades here, and uh, he also offers Capablanca the a2 pawn. Now, feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out uh, what to do here. Well, basically try to figure out, is it okay to capture the a2 pawn? That's what I'm asking you here. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, not blunderer of games. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is definitely not okay to capture the pawn. Because if you capture the pawn, uh, the game is just lost. You can see that the bishop controls the c1 square, so you just capture once and play rook c1 and it's game over. Because now whatever you play 
you just lose. After queen d3, you get rook to c8 check, and now you can block with the bishop d8, you can block with the bishop to f8, and you can block with rook d8, but every move loses. The bishop f8 loses to just mate in one, rook captures here. Uh, if you block uh, with the rook, then it's, uh, of course, just queen captures on d3, you cannot recapture, your rook is pinned. Uh, and if bishop blocks, bishop d8, then the win is even nicer, just queen to f6. Uh, there's no defense against queen to g7 mate. The bishop is now pinned, so you cannot capture. And if after black delivers one check, uh, just king g2, uh, king g2, and there are no, uh, no more checks. So uh, <laughs> Lasker offers a pawn, but it is really uh, quite, quite, quite a poison pawn. So Capablanca trades with rook captures on e2, rook captures on e2, and now queen to b1 check. King to g2, Lasker of course uh, doesn't want his king on the back, back rank, uh, the king is much safer on g2, and only now bishop to f8, but here Lasker declines the trade, he plays bishop to f4, uh, now okay, this bishop is now pretending to be a pawn, but for the moment there are no issues here. We have h6, Capablanca would like to play g5 to kick the bishop away, but h4, Lasker doesn't allow it. With b4, now uh, keeping these pawns here on, on light squares and making the a2 pawn a backwards pawn, so it will remain a weakness for the rest of the game, while Capablanca's bishop here nicely guards the b4 pawn. Uh, with queen to e4, uh, now Lasker offers a queen trade, and it's, uh, well, now it's not all that uh, simple to decline this trade. For example, if you play rook, uh, queen d1, just rook c2, and now you might have some back rank issues of your own. Uh, so, queen captures on e4 by Capablanca, we have rook captures on e4, and now king to g7. Uh, just improving the position of the king. We have rook to c4, and now bishop to c5. Capablanca doesn't allow Lasker's rook to infiltrate the position. We have king to f3, Lasker starts bringing his king into the game, and now Capablanca uh, doesn't find any more uh, ways to continue this game, so he just plays g5, he offers this uh, a complete trade down. Uh, after which you can just accept a draw with h captures, h captures, bishop captures, and it was in this position on move 41 that Lasker and Capablanca agreed to a draw because after rook captures on e5, just the bishop back to f4 and rook d5, uh, there's no way to to actually do anything, uh, and uh, well, they it, it was a uh, gentlemanly to to offer and accept a draw here whereas if for example magnus carlson had this end game today he would probably play it out for 50 or 100 more moves to try and grind down something but uh, i believe in those days it was considered rude and you know it was you didn't prove that your opponent made a mistake so just grinding out an equal position uh, against the against the world champion i believe was even considered rude but uh, who knows uh, but yeah, definitely a, a, a draw and end game, so they agree to a draw. So this is game two, ends in a draw, so still a very, very exciting uh, World Chess Championship match between Manuel Asker and Jose Raul Capablanca, uh, where, as uh, if you've been following so far, Capablanca is basically already the champion and, and Lasker serves uh, as the challenger. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jonathan Bruch, uh, Luke Thomas Go uh, for Pete B. Uh, yesterday was Pete's birthday, but I didn't post any videos yesterday, so sorry about that. I, I wish you a, a very happy birthday. Hope you had a, a really good day. Uh, fourth Dimension, uh, Mark Lefkowitz and Barry Malone for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, most likely continuing the Capablanca saga, but also checking up on your suggestions and such. Thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.